G'day guys, Jason from The Other Farm. I'm actually on the trial property this afternoon. What I want to discuss today is the principles behind the three R's of regenerative farming. And how with these three R principles, you can increase your soil biology life twofold, definitely increase your pastoral yield, and definitely over time, you'll be able to increase your stocking rate and therefore your carrying capacity of your land so stick with me and i'll break them down one hour at a time so the first of the r's is rest obviously pastures need a time to recover to get over from the initial graze or shock of being grazed so as you can see this area in front of me here was grazed two days ago and this is a uniform graze and then typical of what I allow the cattle to do in a 12 hour period so I only like them to graze down that two-thirds height because that's about 60 percent if you go any lower than that 50 percent mark you're actually stopping halting the root system of the plant from growing for numerous days I'll recover that I'll go into that further later so You've got to give it a chance to rest to restore and replenish the nutrients that's been taken out by the livestock and also which will in turn help the plant to grow back so that's things like leaving two-thirds of the plant leaves that armor on the leaves the armor on the soil the height wise it also leaves you a good solar panel on that plant so what you're allowing to do then, you're allowing that plant to grab the sunlight and carbon dioxide out of the ground. But not only that, there's areas of legumes in here like serrazzo and clover. You're allowing those plants, if they're not overgrazed, to gather nitrogen from the air. The plants can't get nitrogen from the air. Only legumes and there's only a specific couple or few other plants that can. So you want to give it time rest so the second R in the three R principles is recycle so apart from the sunlight the carbon dioxide is recycled through the leaves of the plant and also nitrogen but nitrogen like I mentioned can't be taken from the air and used by the plant it has to be fixed by bacteria and other microbes in the soil so then the plant absorb that through the root system in the way of amino acids like i mentioned before apart from legumes it can actually fix nitrogen straight from the air with the help of fixing bacteria so the nutrients consumed by the livestock as they're eating whether it be the forage or whether it be from the mineral feeder they only utilize 10 percent of that for health and to keep them in peak optimal performance the other 90 percent is passed back in the ground in the way of manure and this is the most exciting part I feel, is after the manure hits the ground, how it's recycled back through into the soil. As you can see, there's worm poo there in that mud, or otherwise known as vermicast. So the worms come up, they take that manure and the nutrients in it back to the ground. And so do the dung beetles. The dung beetles do a good job as well. So you come over here, there's more, there's more vermicast or known as worm poo there shouldn't be too hard to find because i've had them in here in full head in 0.2 of an acre so the nutrient recycling back on the ground is pretty uniform and consistent in one area so there's vermicast there another cow patty here there and there so the dung beetles and and the worms take all that nutrients back to the ground and that's why you don't want to till guys because that worm has spent all that time coming up it burrows back down through the ground leaving holes in the soil and so do the beetles those holes if you were to till this property those holes you would expose the microbes to the sun which would kill them the holes would cave in and when it compacts back down there's no aeration in the soil those holes when it rains fill with water and that is beneficial so you're holding the water in the ground it's a water reserve it's like water in a sponge waiting to be used by the plant when required that's why i don't till i don't want to disrupt the glues that hold the soil together 
I don't want to cave in any holes that would possibly be holding moisture for me when it rains. It's just a win-win situation, guys. The longer you can leave your pasture, the more the nutrients or the worms and the beetles can come up and do their job in cool conditions and take all that 90% of that nutrient which has been put back on the ground by the animal back into the ground where it can be utilized by microbiology who then carry it to the plants that require to be grown back. The more you do this process, the speeds up the recovery is recovery time here this was only a 21 day recovery time the, the more animals the more impact the faster the nutrient cycle the faster the recovery then you've got all this thatch on the ground this was four days ago that green stuff was laid over if i part that i put, put on my leg there's that much of it then you've got that dead residue there you part that dead residue and there's more dead residue keep parting it there's more and then you hit the soil level right there soft wet soil look look how loose that is not compact i would have definitely four years ago five years ago i would have considered that wastage on the ground the cattle have trod it there i would have left them here to chew that off to the ground that's lying down it's not going to use it's going to die that is absolute wasted fodder but guys i couldn't totally be i could not be further than the truth so now as we know it, as the organic matter slowly breaks down, it can decompose nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus and sulphur become available for the soil. Therefore, the, as it's slowly breaking down, the soil microbes then gather those nutrients and take it to the plant to assist it in recovery. So the final R in the three principles is recovery. And recovery is dependent on a few factors. Growing season being the main one, if it's summer, you generally might get a few showers here and there like we have and hot humid days soon follow so i've had recovery fast as 21 days these last two cycles i've had the cattle through here it's only been exactly 21 days recovery periods between the last two cycles the grass has just absolutely flourished due to the hot humid conditions but then in winter when it's cooler it may be anywhere between 40 to 60 days before I can bring the cattle back in because obviously the cool conditions and the pastoral growth slows down. And then there's rainfall. That, that goes without saying, nothing's gonna survive without moisture, but the more armor you can get laid down over the years, like I'm saying, I used to call it wastage, but now it's armor. That matting, when you do get rain, holds in the soil longer the sun can't penetrate it out so it's no longer wastage recovery is faster when you get thatch on the ground built over years because it's actually got great water holding capabilities the sun can't penetrate and get the water from the soil the actual plants optimize and get the most out of that water and then you've got plants type of plants so Types of plants, some recover faster than others. I find rhodes grass is a fast one to recover. Whereas you get some of your legumes, like your clover and that, it's a lot far, it's a lot slower recovery period for legumes. So, but generally, when the, I've noticed when the rhodes grass come to seed, the legume or the sorry the clover is probably two, three, four inches high. So it's not too bad to bring it back in, but you just gotta be careful. Don't bring it back too early because you don't wanna wipe all your clover out. So, and the last one in recovery, which is probably the most important of them all, is how, uh, how severely the pasture's been grazed. Like I mentioned before, you really, really don't wanna go below that 50% mark because the root system if it's grazed lower than that 50% height of the pasture growth, you've stunted that root system. It will stop growing for numerous days to get over that initial shock. See, plants and microorganisms have a symbolic relationship, basically where they rely on each other for survival. And that's why you don't ever want to go below that 50% mark if you can help it. See what happens if the plant is overgrazed and it dramatically reduces its ability to photosynthesize. Depending on how bad it's overgrazed, 
a plant should be able to use the stored energy in its leaves. But if it's been overgrazed right to the ground, say that 30% and below, then it's really relying on the root system and it's got to use the reserves throughout the root system to survive and to grow back until it gets those solar panels or leaf matter big enough so it can capture the sunlight and carbon dioxide to push that liquid carbon into the ground for the microbes. And the, but the moment, see the moment when you go below that 25%, it stops growing, the root system stops, the plant hasn't got no more spare energy left. So the symbolic relationship has now fallen over between the plant and the microbes because the plant can't release any excess energy to feed the microbes because it's in a survival mode. And the microbes ain't in the business of collecting nutrients for a plant that doesn't give them energy itself. So if a plant hasn't got a solar system, it can't collect the carbon dioxide and the sunlight, so it can't pump liquid carbon into the ground to feed the microbes. The microbes ain't gonna do it for free and just grab all these nutrients to recover that plant back. It'll go to another area or another plant that's not overgrazed. So that's why you don't wanna go, you don't wanna wreck that symbolic relationship. The plant gives energy and sugar to the microbes, which fuel it, and then on return, the microbes grab the nutrients from required and energy back to the plant so it can recover. So, and how do you know your pasture is fully recovered? You just look at the tips of the plant. So the cattle have been in here today and I can see that's been nipped off. There's, there's a bit of a plant here that it's flat on the end. So when you do a pastoral graze or walk, I walk my pastures before I bring the girls back in. I walk it every day to check how much armor they've laid down the ground. If you've got areas of flat surface on your tips of your plants, it's not fully recovered. So optimally, you don't want to be bringing them back in until that is fully recovered. So that's it guys, I've covered the three R's in recovery of the pasture. It's more or less about the pasture, this one. It's not like the three M's which was about the cattle, it's more about the soil and the plants. So I hope you guys got some uh, valuable information out of that. So I've got to move these girls now and then uh, head up the house, head to the outer farm. We've got some fruit trees to water. So have a good morning. Have a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening, guys, wherever you're watching us from, and we'll catch you later.